boys soccer season comes to a conclusion tonight with a Class 3A state championship match at Hoffman Estates, pitting the Broncos of Barrington against the Huskies of Naperville North. We take a look at the bracket and how they got here for Barrington. Four goals in the second half as they knocked off Conant in the last semifinal, and Naperville North upset previously unbeaten Bradley Bourbonnet to get to this state championship match. We welcome you into Hoffman Estates High School. I'm Nathan Weaver alongside Matt Meshack. And Matt, two teams taking different routes here. Barrington beat a conference foe for the third time this year. And Naperville North with their second straight stunning upset to get to the state title match. And both teams in the second half came back to do it as well. We'll see which team takes advantage of their first half performance tonight. Yeah, all six goals these two teams scored in the semis came in the second half. Let's take a look at our key players to get things going for Barrington. Klaus Pollen, he had two of those four. He, he really sets everything up for Barrington. He works well with his teammates, and uh, 30 goals on the year, just a special player for Scott Stive and crew. On the other side is the guy who orchestrates everything, Chris Sullivan. He had a penalty kick to tie it, and he's the man to keep an eye on tonight for the Huskies. Much like P Palin, it, he keeps everything through through the middle, goes through him, and uh, really does an, a nice job. And He's got 50 goals on the his career for Naperville North, only the fifth Husky to do that. Just a really special player, really the heartbeat for the Huskies. The IHSA season wraps up tonight. The Class 3A Boys Soccer Championship starting lineups and the kickoff when we come back on Comcast Chicago. The IHSA is achievement. Focus. Creativity. Spirit. champions. The future plays here. The Illinois High School Association. Country Financial wants to know, what do you look for in a financial services partner? Get to know us and get to know what we need and what we want to do. Treat me like they would treat their family. Help us decide what is a want and what is a need. I want something tailor-made for me. At Country Financial, our goal is to take the time to get to know you and then help you put together a customized package of insurance and financial solutions to help you own your future. When someone really listens and they're planning for us, I trust them. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Today's championship matchup is brought to you by Country Financial. At Country Financial, we understand that helping you means knowing you. Take charge of owning your future with Country Financial. Call your local rep at 1-866-COUNTRY or visit ownyourfuture.com. Welcome back to Hoffman Estates. We've got the 3A Boys Soccer Championship and ready to go here this evening as the two teams have been introduced at midfield and ready for each of them to go after their second boys state championship. For Naperville North, they will wear the home whites. They won it in 1998. And they will have in goal, sophomore Tom Welch, Ethan Harvey, Colin Iverson, Mitch Conrad, and Andrew Kleber. Is the back four in front of him. Jack Berry, Will Richmond, and Chris Sullivan are in the middle. Jack Brumigan, who had the game winner in the semifinal against Bradley Bourbonnet, Ty Conrad, and Ian Guppy up top. Guppy replaces James Zhang, who was injured in that semi. The other way for Barrington, 23, three and one. They'll wear the all blacks today. Alex Ruffalo is in goal. He's a senior, Hudson Walsh, John Gadboy, Josh Coulter, and Nash Peary are the defense in front of Ruffalo, who you see there. Zach Carbonara, Gio Guanaro, Enrico Ruffalo, and Kai Stevens are the midfield. Klaus Powell, who we mentioned the open, and Caleb Orr get into the starting lineup today, replacing Michael Blank. Orr had one of their four second half goals yesterday. Our officials, Rick Giotti is our main referee. He's giving final instructions right now to the Huskies of Naperville North. He'll be assisted on the Lizzie Linesman from John Martellin, Rafael Zelinski, and Brett Richter is the fourth official at the scorer's table. Naperville North, coached by Jim Conrad, 13th year, 222 wins, 57 losses, 26 ties. He brought the Huskies to state in 2010, went home with the fourth place trophy. For Barrington, it's Scott Stive, 374 wins, 125 losses, and 46 draws in 22 total years. He's been at Barrington for 18 third place in 02, 
state champions in 07, and we're underway in the last soccer match of the year in IHSA Boys Soccer for All Classes, and we'll see who's gonna join Normal U High and Chicago Latin as state champions here in 2016. Again, it's the Huskies in white, the Broncos in black. Both teams, as Matt mentioned in that open, had comeback second half wins in the semis, breaking down the right side and knocking, getting it knocked away. Getting it right back now is Naperville North. I'm gonna say I'm interested, Nate, to see right away who for Naperville North is gonna shell Palin and who for Barrington is gonna shadow Chris Sullivan. I mean, those are just the two keys to this game. Look at Palin, two goals yesterday, plus an assist, now 30 goals. Five assists on the year. The other way, you mentioned Chris Sullivan. Penalty kick to tie yesterday, his 19th goal of the year. He's headed to Bowling Green. will join his brother, Joe. 50th career goal. He's also second in school history and assist. He just passed his brother during this playoff run. He had a nice look there at Mitch Conrad doing some nice work for Naperville North defensively, shutting down the Bronco attack. Huskies, 20 wins, two losses, three ties. They lost to Morton 3-1 in August. They avenged that loss, though, beating the previously unbeaten Morton squad in the Lewis Super Sectional 2-0 to get here to state. That was a nationally ranked, top-ranked nationally high school team from Morton. It was 21-0-1. They drew against Bennett Academy, who finished third in 2A. They lost to Bolingbrook. They also drew against Lions and against Naperville as well. It's Niqua Valley. Here's a free kick for the Huskies. Enrollment of just over 2,700 on the DePage Valley Conference for Naperville North, and they try to get it forward here, and it's sent back. Ruffalo. Moves it forward for the Broncos, and out of bounds. Throw in for Naperville North. The Broncos of Barrington lost their first game of the year to Niles West out of Skokie. They didn't lose again until the 24th of September, lost 3-2 to Mundelein, then lost to Wheeling in their last regular season game. Before storming through the postseason to win their own regional and super, they won the Buffalo Grove sectional. They beat Conant yesterday for the third time this year. This ball is knocked back towards the line, saved in. That was a good job uh, shadowing by Mitch Conrad on Klaus Pollen. Broncos in the Mid-Suburban League, and they had to play a state semifinal against the conference opponent. Fell down to Conant 2-0 and came back to win 4-2. I mentioned that comeback. They scored yesterday. 25 seconds into the second half. And then a minute seven into the second half, they had it tied. Added two more in 1-4-2. Naperville North beat previously unbeaten Bradley Bourbon A 2-1. to one. So their last two wins were against teams who, before they saw the Huskies, were a combined 45-0-1. And, and they beat both of them. That was a, it's a heck of a week like we were talking about earlier knocking off those two programs, especially Morton. You know, everyone thought this was the year they were going to be right here in this game, but uh, you know, Naperville North, Jim Conrad doing an excellent job with this program, 13th season. Most of these, most of the area outlets say that they're definitely a first rate program. So one of, the, one of their players said in the article they were 101 chances to beat Morton, they did that. Then they had to go play another unbeaten team. Did that as well. Here's a shot into the box. And picked up there by Ruffalo as Sullivan got to that at the top of the 18. They talk about Chris Sullivan, you know, has the skills, puts in tireless work ethic. Read a story that, uh, you know, one night after dinner he went out and honed his craft for two hours all by himself when no one else would go with him. So it's just that dedication. He really just wants to be the best out there. Down the right side. Conrad sends it into the middle. They drop it off here. Shot through is wide to the left by Jack Berry. Love the teamwork there. Jack Brom again to Jack, Jack Berry. Two Jacks. 
working together. A pair of jacks just not enough to win that hand. Berman gonna have the game winner in the semifinal. Barry had a couple of assists. He had some injury issues as well, rehabbing. He had two long throw-ins as they got that win in the Bolingbrook sectional championship. Then beat Morton on goals by Cesar Resendez, who will come off the bench. And Ian Guppy, who didn't start yesterday, is starting today. Chipping it forward here, the Huskies get another good look. Barrington started very slow in the semifinal. They were down 2-0 to Conant, who could not hold on to that lead. But it's almost a thing with Barrington and Coach Scott Stive is like if they can come on if they're down if they can come back and get one real quickly they feel that much better about themselves. We'll drive it into the box here and that's over the head of everybody. And just, in, just interested to know that hey you know let's get a goal early into the box shot and save is made there by Welch nearly got that goal early dropped in the box and Tom Welch the sophomore was only allowed 12 goals all season, was up to the task. Bromigan carries it out against Ruffalo here, and now they've got it back up. Bromigan again gets around a defender. He's got Conrad in the middle, gets it to him. Conrad to Sullivan. Sullivan, top of the box, shot is deflected. And it comes back out. You see Ty Conrad at the top, number 16. Mitch Conrad in the back, number 20. They are nephews of the head coach, Jim Conrad. And it seems like every team we see here at State's got some kind of family connection, be it an assistant coach, a head coach, or as we just saw with Bradley Bourbonnet, twin brothers up at the top of the attack for the Boilermakers. And it's been a family affair all weekend long, both in 2A and now here in 3A. Long throw into the box. All the way through, it is the first goal. It comes for Naperville North, the long throw straight into the box with 32, 37 to go. It came all the way in and Will Richmond was standing at the back post, right at the six, completely alone. I bet that the Broncos were expecting Sullivan to take a head to that. He let it go. Barry was going for Sullivan. That ball just goes well over his head and Will Richmond right there with the right foot making no mistake. Not a chance at all for Alex Ruffalo. Goal number five for the junior. Barry had two long throws. They got goals to get them here after rehabbing from a sprained ankle. It was his throws setting up two goals to beat Nuke Valley, and that's Will Richmond. Well, now a different feeling now for Naperville North. Now you have a lead early on. You know, what's the strategy going to be for Jim Conrad and crew? Yeah, both of these teams have played from behind so much. Now they've got the 1-0 lead here. Give Barry the assist. On that throw in, now Bromigan gets the steal. Here's Sullivan with a lot of space in the middle. Siebens chasing him down. Ty Conrad on the left foot. Tackle it away. Good defense. Josh Coulter. And we're going to see Jack Berry come over to the left side for another long throw in. He's closer on this one. He was, uh, well, he was well back on a different angle. On the last throw in from the other side. Let's see what he does from the side that hosts the fans in the press box here. Berry gets a nice long run up on the track. Gets it into the middle, headed to the back post. And this one will go out and it will be a goal kick. But again, found his target for a header, just didn't get it in on goal. And a goal kick coming up for the Broncos. When you see Alex Rafalo there, barking out instructions. You get a good look there at Nash Peary. Gonna trigger this free kick. Track star Nash Peary, the senior with four goals, 12 assists, he takes these free kicks. Obviously that one just a goal kick, but he'll take the free kicks that are up in attacking positions and he's picked out 12 helpers on the year for the Broncos. Trying to get it in the middle to Pallant. 
Powell dominated the ball yesterday. Even when they fell behind, he dropped back into a midfield position so he could see more of the ball and direct that attack. It's exactly what he did. Moving forward here, they get it through Ethan Haney and a whistle and a foul. Rick Giotti making his first call of the night and a foul against the Broncos. And Sullivan will stand over this one. Penalty kick with 22-27 to play in the semi. Tied on Bradley Bourbonnet, and then he started the play. A couple passes later last night, Jack Bromigan slammed it home and gave the Huskies the upset. And they're looking to the sideline here to see what play Coach Conrad and company want run. He'll swing it in. Looking for the header and back post, no touch. It was sublime deflected delivery. by the Broncos, so, so a corner coming up. It was a sublime delivery there by Sullivan once again. Just did not find a head of a Husky. See Rafalo there, making sure that near post is covered. Zach Carbonara has got it. Ethan Harvey there will trigger the corner. He swings it in, and that's over the top. Ten minutes in, Barrington had a couple of moves early in the match to get down into the 18, but since then it's been all Naperville North. A couple of shots blocked out front. They got the goal. And a couple of other very good opportunities on set pieces. They'll play the short corner here. Enrico Ruffalo, his brother Alex, the goalie, a senior. Enrico, a junior in the midfield. Out of bounds for a throw in, and Rico will come up to take that throw in. Giving the brother combinations on this Broncos squad. Enrollment over 3,000 for Barrington. Mentioned they're out of the mid suburban league. One of the top rated classes in the Chicago area, mid suburban conference. Conant, obviously, who they faced in the semifinal. Wheeling as well. And Wheeling beat both. Barrington and Conan during the year and then saw both of those teams make it to the final four. Now it's Sullivan on the attack, sending it out wide right. You get the run on there from Guppy, but it's sent back. That was the same press, by the way, Jack Brom again, getting to the ball, getting some steals and starting counters for the Huskies. Left side. Sent forward, Haney into the box, dangerous ball, and Ruffalo there to grab it off the hop before Sullivan could get a touch. Ethan Harvey sent that one all the way through. 11 seniors on this Barrington team. We've got a lot of them in the starting lineup. Seven juniors, 15 returning players from last year. Last year's team falling in the regional semis, the Highland Park. And Making the run all the way to the state championship game this year. Ball goes all the way through. And Alex Ruffalo, the Community Partner of the Year Award from the IYSA for their work with Top Soccer Program. Program for kids with disabilities, their entire team taking part in that, along with the junior varsity team. Coach Stai, very proud of what his team's been able to do off the field as well as make it to the championship here on the field. And they try to come back like they did last night. They were 2-0 down at halftime and just kind of flipped the switch, came just firing out of that halftime conversation, scoring two goals within a minute and seven seconds to get it tied. Oh, Scott Stive is a big believer in the way Liverpool does things in the English Premier League, Jurgen Klopp over there and uh, in England, and uh, the motto is you'll never walk alone. So definitely he's very proud of the team, like you said, and it doesn't seem like for them any lead is insurmountable. They're dealing with a one-goal deficit right now. They dedicated the season to Coach Stein's father, who was a team manager for the last 10 years, passed away in November, and they dedicated the entire season. Coach Stein's father, Getting across here, nobody in the middle of the box though, and that's sent out all the way to Sullivan, who's battling to win it here against Hudson Walsh. Sends it backwards. 
Neighborville North doing a nice job with possession, really slowing it down. Barrington almost likes to get out more on a fast break type of a counter, but the Huskies slowing it down. Got a whistle, and they're going to stop the clock here. 25-32 is a stop the clock. The officials having a brief conversation. The linesman called over the middle referee here. He's going to go all the way over to the sidelines and have something to say on the Naperville North side. Must have been an instruction there. There's a sub waiting to come in. Let's see what the deal is. Everybody on the bench for Naperville North, all the players on the bench just got up, left the bench, and went back to their bags. I wonder if it's because they weren't wearing any kind of bib jersey on that sideline. You see them there, they're all putting jackets on. So I wonder if that was the deal where it was tough to tell when a player was on the sideline who was in the game, who was on the bench. We saw from the other games earlier, the players on the bench were all wearing bibs. That's a good catch there, Nate. The well, that ten players are wearing jackets that are zipped up, and now there's the bibs. They get those <laughs> bright green bibs, and now you'll know who's on the field and who's on the bench. Ellie Corfon has come in for Neighborville North while that was all going on. Yeah. Five nine freshman. He was standing over there for a while, ready to sub in, and they wanted to make sure they got the bench situation cleared up first, and they let him come into the match. He's up front. Get it down the sideline. The Guppy brought back. And now Barrington trying to move it forward. And the players on the sideline were standing, which is fine in soccer. In basketball, they don't want the guys to stand because they're the, you know, the gals that stand because the player, the fans sitting right behind them can't see. But there's no fans on that side of the field. No fans allowed over there. So the players can stand if they want on the bench. But they just got to be able to distinguish who's in the game and who's not. Here's a nice steal. Powell moving forward, still powering his way forward with the ball. Out to Ruffalo. Ruffalo tapping wide, just wide. Good effort from the Broncos there, looking for the equalizer. Enrico Ruffalo sent it in. There's Caleb Orr. Caleb Orr sliding in, challenging Tom Welch. Welch came out, got a tap to it. If Orr gets there a step ahead, looks like he's got the slide the ball past him to even this up. So close there for the Broncos. It's a great ball by Ruffalo. This one bounces all the way through. Conrad, the freshman, gets a touch. Powen. A whistle and a foul. Powen got shoved from behind. It was a late whistle, but I think that was just because he had trouble locating it. He was calling the foul immediately down the sideline. Barrington out. That's a goal kick. That was a nice run by Palin. As that was a quick restart from the Broncos and trying to catch the Huskies napping. Put it down, see if they can just catch them immediately. But that time, they could not. 17, Cesar Resendez. He had a goal in the super sectional win over Morton. He subs in along with Jack Hill. Hill's a defender, played briefly in the semi. Resendez had a lot of the ball in the semi. A couple good scoring opportunities. Here's Ruffalo. Tried to get it out wide, or could not. And this one into the track and out of bounds. Throw in coming up. For the Huskies, Ruffalo on it, knocked away by Sullivan. Well, you talk about Resendez and the Huskies. What a mix that Jim Conrad has. A lot of freshmen that are getting significant minutes and Resendez with that significant play in the super sectionals and uh, goes all, all the way back to Chris Sullivan who as a senior has really taken what he felt as a freshman to heart as a senior making the freshmen feel comfortable and teaching them the Husky way the way that they should be playing being included and in being good teammates. So I mean it's just Jim Conrad just has to be very pleased that not only after this run, he's got a whole bunch more to look forward to. Ali Corfin, Ty Conrad, Cesar Resendez, three freshmen. We've already seen this match today. Their backup goalie's also a freshman. Big service here from 
Peary headed towards goal and just over the top. Waltz was there hoping he didn't have to touch it so they could get possession of the ball and they will as it goes all the way out for a throw in. He definitely he kept watching yeah. that one all the way to the line to see if it was going to be a goal kick throw in or if he needed to play it. I was just going to say Nate that was a very smart play by Welch as long as no one was chasing after it with him he just ushered it out. Battling that's going to be a foul against Orr. had a lot of the hands there. Hands all over. His opponent. And a free kick here for the Huskies. Cross midfield. Sullivan went between two Broncos and got a piece of it. Corfin knocked out. He touched it last. And now he's over to chat with Corfin. He got a little tangled up with Ruffalo. And the whistle will allow play to continue. Throw in here for the Broncos. Corfin got a touch. Siebens nearly lost it to Sullivan. Keeps it. Drops it back. Moving forward now are the Broncos. Stringing some passes together. Now they'll get it forward through Powent. All the way back, Coulter. Sends it looking for Orr. Orr got ahead to it. Headed out. Right side, Ruffalo. He's had a couple very strong balls into the box. Nice break on Corfin. Deflected. Coulter tapped it out to Hudson Walsh. Now all the way back over. I was going to say, he, you could tell Ruffalo was winding up to take that shot, but a good job by the Huskies getting in the way of it. You don't know where that ball was going to go. Sullivan wins it back. The Broncos have had the better of the possession now over the last few minutes, trying to tilt the field after having the Huskies camp out in their end for a while. Ball to the right corner, looking for Ruffalo over the defense. Can he keep it in bounds? No, he cannot. It's 1-0 to the Naperville North Huskies. You're watching the boys class 3A state soccer championship on Comcast Chicago. Country Financial wants to know, do you feel in control of your financial future? Uh, no. <sighs> sort of. But I, I have the desire um, to be in control of my money. I need a plan. At Country Financial, our goal is to work with you to lay out a step-by-step -step plan of insurance and financial solutions to help you regain control of your financial planning, to help you own your future. Understanding is empowering. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. From the gridiron to the hardwood, on the links or on the track. On the diamond or on the ice. Go to prepfilms.com. It's easy. You can order your DVD online. At prepfilms.com, you make the memories. We'll make them last forever. Welcome back to Hoffman Estates High School, the Class 3A boys Soccer Championship, Naperville North with the 1-0 lead over Barrington. Nathan Levy, Matt Meshack with you. And Klaus, pa Klaus Powen on the ball for the Broncos moving forward. At the half of this first half. Shipping it in. Comes to Orr. Shot. Oh, it's just over. That hit the football crossbar. Just over the top. What a trap down and a one-time volley. Absolutely a ferocious volley there from Orr. Just unable to bring it down. And really that close to evening the score for the Broncos. Senior scored his eighth goal of the season in the semifinal. Also had his eighth assist of the season. And they're going to send this all the way back. The, we're still letting a sub in. We're not ready for play there. I think it was Michael Blank, number 19, who subbed in. That's what I heard over the PA as they were waiting. And while subbed to get all the way off of the field, which was Orr, who nearly just scored. And then he was subbed out for Michael Blank, who started the semi or started in his place tonight. 
Blank gets a touch. 10 goals, six assists for the sophomore, Michael Blank. So good to have that kind of fire, firepower off the bench tonight. Sullivan into the middle of the field. Barry sends it out wide, but does not get it to a teammate. It's back into the middle. Sullivan got ahead to it around Siebens. All the way back out. Claver looking for Conrad. Barry. Barry steals it away. He's got Sullivan in the middle. He'll take a shot, left footed. One hop, then a little rebound there, but nobody in the box at all as Ruffalo could yep. spill the rebound because he knew there was nobody there to poke it home. Absolutely. Also, while we were at break, Ian Guppy, Jack Bromigan, I just mentioned Will Ritzman, the goal scorer from earlier, back on for the Huskies. All the way into the box again and picked up by Alex Ruffalo. Ruffalo across midfield. Sullivan and Siemens battling, and that's going to go against Sullivan. They were kind of pushing on each other, and Sullivan extended that left arm. Well, talking about multi sport Broncos, Nash Pierre, we always also mentioned a track team member. Charlie Frank also on the track team for Barrington. Michael Blank and Ta Connor Delahunt on the wrestling team. Last Foul year well. is going to put Barrington in a fantastic goal scoring opportunity position here. Just outside the 18. Klaus Powen can definitely have a go from here. Tom Powen, I'm thinking top right corner. You got a lot of room. You can get it low and get it rising. Four in that wall. He's on the edge of the 18. Powen! Up off the crossbar and over. Just did not dip back down, or that would have been into the upper 90 left corner. Great effort. Great effort there from Palin. We see Cesar Resendez back on for the Huskies, but uh, that close, that close. We saw that in the two-way championship game with a couple crossbar hits between Latin and Mount Carmel. They've hit both crossbars over the last couple of minutes. One off of the soccer crossbar, one off the football. Here Sullivan might have a break. No, good defense to get back and win that away. Hudson Walsh was right there on him. Now it's Rico Ruffalo, 50-50 ball, headed forward by Harvey. Resendez chasing it. Barrington keeps it on the left side. Carbonara knocks it back in the middle. Up top, Resendez turns, can't get around the double team. Powell came back to win it. He took the worst of that collision, chasing forward now, Sullivan. And that'll go out of bounds. Last touch by Sullivan on the deflection. A throw in for Barrington. Chris Sullivan is good as advertised um, all over the field. You see that ball will go back to Ruffalo and he will reset. And get it again. Ruffalo will try the left side this time. Charging forward with the ball. Nash Peary tracks to Harlow. Good speed on the ball. Switching fields, looking for Ruffalo. Deflected, and then Ruffalo got a piece of it, but Richmond couldn't hold on to it. Now it's still Ruffalo. He's got Manara with him. Moving forward. Guarnero played it back. Walsh will send it in. Header, but there's nobody there except for white shirts. And Tom Welch, so Welch picked that up as Colin Iverson was the one defender back. Really like that sequence there with Ritzman and Brom again really pushing the Broncos back and Naperville North will get a free kick right here. Foul on Stevens, you got your choice there. He hit his hand, he also was pushing against a Husky opponent. And it's a free kick. Sullivan is Ready to put it in play. Oh 
Sullivan. Sends it into the box, in on goal, and Ruffalo is there to make the catch. Gets it out wide to the left. Drops it back. They go forward with it again. They've still got it, moving forward. Barrington. Playing it back. One arrow. Heavy first touch and comes all the way back now to Walsh. Chased down, knocked away by Brome again, and then Walsh gets help from Coulter, wins it back. Looking up for Blank, couldn't get it to him. Resendez. Sullivan back heel. And cleared back across midfield. Pallant. Pinned in on the sidelines with two defenders and they knock it away out of bounds. Well, really a theme of this state tournament has been if there's an individual player out there, you usually see about two, two players on the defensive side trying to pin him to the sidelines, not trying to let him work through the middle. We see that in 1A and now in the 2A and 3A finals. Just an excellent job knowing who's got the creative movement out there. Naperville North has the Broncos Palin under control early on. Peary with the throw in, middle of the box. Headed out, Sullivan got the last touch. Peary again. Plays it back to the middle of the field. All the way back to midfield. They can reset the offense here. Everybody except for Ruffalo's on this end of the field at the moment. They'll play it back to Walsh. Hudson Walsh, Coulter, switching sides. Guinero, Guinero out wide, too far for Ruffalo. That skips on the turf and rolls out for a goal kick with just over 10 minutes to go in the first half. Still Naperville North. The one nil lead on the throw in by Jack Berry that was knocked home by Will Richmond and they now send Chris Sullivan out. So he gets his first breather of the day after running all over the field and directing the offense for 30 minutes. Freshman Ty Conrad back in to take his spot up top with Brumigan. This will roll out of bounds and be a throw in. Barrington moving forward now to try to pin Naperville North in. Throw in, Brom again, touches it back, and that's cleared out, and another throw in. So moving everybody forward, they have pinned the Huskies back. Naperville North having trouble getting it on their own end right now. No, they just need to get possession to the Broncos, but uh, excellent job as you see Ethan Harvey throwing that in. Bonero touched it with his hand as he was going to the ground. Good call there. Well, he won the ball, but then slapped at it with his left hand. I was going to say, early indication uh, for Naperville North in the last nine minutes is to sag back and try and nurse this one goal lead. Again, much different than the semifinals when having to, to play chase after halftime. So they want to be on the other side of things. That was just one of my thinking points early on is who's going to take advantage of the first half as opposed to the second half. And the sectional and the super sectional combined, they did not give up a goal. They scored eight. Three against Wabonzi Valley, three against Nuka Valley, and three and two against Morton. So they give up the one against the Boilermakers, which came on a set play. Gave up three total in the regional. They have seven shutouts in their last 11 starts, so they're used to playing with the lead and protecting it. With 20 wins on the year and. That's what they've got here now with 48 minutes and change left overall. Barrington has been shut out once all season. They drew 0-0 with McHenry on September the 19th. Their other losses, they scored two in all three of their losses. Here's a whistle. That 
that far sideline. They stopped the clock here, 7.54 to go. Didn't go to the pocket yet to give a card, but he's over chatting with Coach Conrad right now. Let's see what the discussion is here. The player at the scorer's table to sub in. That's Sullivan to come back in. Andrew Claver was also there to come back in. He's talking with the fourth official. He did stop the clock at 7.54. And it's gonna be a free kick for Naperville North. Sullivan was allowed to come in. Claver was not. Turn to the game for the Huskies is number five, Chris. So Sullivan. Sullivan's back in. They reset that clock to 7.54. And now the whistle to allow for play. It's all the way through to Ruffalo. Moving forward. Guanaro. Poked forward. Sent all the way across. Farrington, nice move. Getting around a defender, going down the sideline now. Carbonara. Siebens. And Powell taken down from behind. Free <laughs> kick coming up here. Be about 30 yards away. They say contact from behind, giving him a forearm to the back. Looked like that was Brom again. Just inside, 30 yards from goal. Powen from 20 earlier hit the crossbar. This one from 30 in on goal, and Welch diving to his right makes the save. Powen's going near post with these free kicks, and Welch had nice positioning, able to hold on to it before it even had any chance of going to the net. Punts it to midfield. Header won by Barrington. Controlled by Richmond. Forward for Sullivan, who gets fouled. Foss Palin. He has 30 goals on the season. Second all-time, only behind Paul Maselli for Barrington honors. He did that in 1986, Maselli. Just inside midfield here. For Sullivan. Now look, they get it in for some service. A line outside the 18 on this one. Contact in the box, couple players going down. He never kicked the ball. Now we'll have a whistle. He might have a foul. In among all that scrum, the linesman was waving his flag. Rick Giotti is in there talking to a bunch of the players who were involved in all of that posturing for position. Now Sullivan puts it in, sending it into the box. Seven's got a head on it, knocked down. It comes to Iverson. Second effort is deflected and a foul. Got a swing and a miss there on that first one, and then got a second bite at the apple, but a foul called against the Huskies. So well, the they so will clear it out here. To say the sophomore Iverson, you know, with 10 goals on the season, you know, he's definitely prone to finishing. Just unable to put that one home. Harrington. Losing it in the back, but Bromigan had to go all the way forward off of him. Very high energy from Bromigan. Been a theme this first half, just the intensity, the pressure, trying to get possession back to Naperville North as quickly as possible. Fiber has been over at the scorer's table for a while to sub back in. He wanted to sub in when they stopped the clock with 7.54 to go. They wouldn't let him come in there. He comes in now, replacing Resenda. So he was standing over the table for a good five minutes. Out to the right from Richmond. 
Crossing back over. Bromigan tries to chase it down. Sullivan. Sieben's been going at it all night in the midfield. Now it's Sullivan. Sullivan to the right. He'll let a shot go. Low on the ground. Deflected. And it'll go out for a throw in. And this is where Jack Berry's dangerous. He had the assist from about this same spot on a long throw in. Earlier in the first half as he found Richmond. That was the 32-37 mark. And Sullivan, we're going to see where he lines up here. About the same position is going to be line up with the far post. And I think it's going to go exactly the same way they threw it the last time. And I don't blame him. Barry with the long throw in near post. Drops down. Shot deflected. That was Conrad who got a touch. Headed back in the direction of Barry. Doesn't get there. Midfield. Punched in. And the flag was up. Mitch Conrad headed that all the way back in, but the offside trap worked for the Broncos that time. And Naperville North has to be pleased. They'll be even more pleased if they can get through these last three minutes. Iverson sends it back across midfield. But at the same time, we've seen this story before. If you're the Broncos going in trailing, they still feel pretty good about themselves. And will they have a repeat of the semifinals where they score a minute after the intermission? Heck, they might even switch it and do it a minute before the intermission. This time we'll see. Long throw in for the Broncos. Brom again. Had it taken away. Walsh. Backtracks. Stevens. In the middle. Send it out wide. Carbonara. Keep it going, shot on the wing, cross. Oh, nobody hit the back post. About a step off was Enrico Ruffalo from nodding this match at one. Oh, a pretty delivery there. Just had a little too much pace there. Goal kick coming up. And sent forward. for the Huskies. Conrad loses it, Guppy chasing. Middle of the field, Renaro. They get it back again, Naperville North. Sullivan, dancing through the middle on his left foot, spins, drops it off, Barry. Back to Sullivan, lets it go through. Harvey. Brom again, back to Harvey. The edge of the 18. One minute, one minute to play. Left footed shot and rolls all the way through the box and a goal kick coming up here towards the end of the first half of play. Goal kick for the Broncos. Header in the middle. Pallant. Lost it. Barry was there. Richmond. Conrad and stolen away. Coulter. Long ball headed by Mitch Conrad. Siemens. Iverson. Brom again. Let it go for Sullivan. Sullivan. Could not get around the one last defender and it sent towards the sideline to bring the first half to a close. Halftime here at Hoffman Estates. Naperville North has got the one nil lead. A long throw in from Jack Berry. Found Will Richmond alone at the back post and he slammed it in past Alex Ruffalo. The 32 37 mark of the first half. So one nil to Naperville North here at halftime. Let's go down onto the field. Matt has Naperville North head coach Jim Conrad here at halftime. One nothing lead at the half. Just describing what's working well for you guys out there today. Well, we're holding on for dear life at times. Barrington's been great going to goal. So um, as long as we keep uh, ourselves between them and the goal, I think we'll be all right. Obviously, uh, restarts has been a strength for us all year. And so it's good to get one early. Um, we're going to probably have to score again, though, to win this one. Uh, you know, just uh, you know, 
talk about uh, you know what this will mean to the program uh, uh, if you can hold on but uh, feels a little different now uh, to be in the lead as opposed to having to come back like you did in the semifinal yeah absolutely uh, you know there's uh, disadvantages to both I mean it's good to be in front here to have a one goal uh, lead at half um, but Barrington last night proved that they can come back and score in the second half so we'll have to be ready for that coach thank you very much good luck in the second half Nate back to you Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Coach. We will be back to take a look at our first half stats and highlights. You're watching IHSA 3A Soccer on Comcast Chicago. Country Financial wants to know, what do you look for in a financial services partner? Get to know us and get to know what we need and what we want to do. Treat me like they would treat their family. Help us decide what is a want and what is a need. I want something tailor-made for me. At Country Financial, our goal is to take the time to get to know you and then help you put together a customized package of insurance and financial solutions to help you own your future. When someone really listens and they're planning for us, I trust them. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Welcome back to Hoffman Estates High School. Halftime, Naperville North with a 1-0 lead over Barrington in the Class 3A Boys Soccer IHSA State Championship. Let's take a look at the stats from the first half. Shots are pretty easy, even. Naperville North had seven. Barrington had six. Naperville North with the goal. So you take out that goal, and they both had six shots. Naperville North with the 1-0 lead. Both teams with six fouls. Barrington's keeper, Alex Ruffalo, with four saves. The Naperville North keeper, Tom Walsh, with two saves. Naperville North with a corner. No corners as of yet. Official on the stat sheet for Barrington. So there's the stats from the first half of play. Let's take a look at our highlights. The first goal, the only goal of the first half, came on a long throw in. Jack Berry lets it fly from right in front of the Barrington bench, and he found Will Richmond at the back post. Richmond not going to miss from that distance. He hammers it home. He's got his fifth goal of the season. Another assist for Barry. Seven assists. His last three assists have come on. These long throw in. Very impressive. On the other end for Barrington, a couple of near misses from Barrington so far in the first half. They got the crossbar. They also hit the crossbar of the football goal post. And then another one off the post, Klaus Powen uh, on the free kick. It was Orr who hit it, the football goal post. So they both come close on a couple of different opportunities. And we'll see in the second half if it's just a matter of time before the Broncos find the equalizer like they did in the second half in the semi. It's Naperville North 1, Barrington New at halftime. And we'll be right back from Hoffman Estates on Comcast Chicago. The IHSA is competition. Teamwork. Integrity. Determination. Triumph. The future plays here. The Illinois High School Association. Welcome back to Hoffman Estates. 1-0 Naperville North with the lead over Barrington here at halftime. They got the goal on the throw in from Jack Berry to Will Richmond. A little bit over seven minutes in to the first half. We'll see how Barrington plans to attack and get back into this match. Their head coach, Scott Stein, is down on the field with Matt. Matt, take it away. Scott trailing 1-0 here in the first half. What's going to be the key to the second half? Well, we certainly can't leave them unmarked like we did on their goal. There's been a couple other times like that. We'll have to go talk about that. Um, I thought we played great. Uh, the football part of it, we are, I think, creating a lot of chances. There's a couple back posts there. We've hit the post a couple times, so we just have to play a little bit better defense on those set pieces and in transition. But I was really upset with the goal we gave up, but I'm also very encouraged by the way the game went after that. And a quick restart, uh, the key to the second half for you guys, or what's going to be the key? Well, we scored twice in uh, 67 seconds last night, but I don't know that I would expect that again. We just we need a goal. We need a goal. We've got 40 minutes to get one goal, and uh, we'll work at it real hard. My boys have done that all year. We'll keep doing it tonight. There's no doubt. Coach, thank you for this. Yeah, Good luck you. in the second half. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Coach. It's 1-0 Naperville North. We'll be back with a second half kickoff. The last 40 minutes of regulation coming up next on Comcast Chicago. Country Financial wants to know, do you feel in control of your financial future? Uh, no, sort of. But I, I have the desire. 
um, to be in control of my money. I need a plan. At Country Financial, our goal is to work with you to lay out a step-by-step -step plan of insurance and financial solutions to help you regain control of your financial planning, to help you own your future. Understanding is empowering. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Welcome back to Hoffman Estates High School. We get ready to start the second half. Nathan Believer and Matt Meshek with you, and April North with the 1 0 lead here as we start the second half of play here at Hoffman Estates High School. The Barrington Broncos in the black jerseys, black shorts with the red numbers will kick off. They'll now go right to left. Naperville North in the all white kits with the red numbers with a 1 0 lead to protect here in the second half of play. Barrington came flying out of halftime last night. They scored two goals to erase a 2 0 deficit in the first one minute and seven seconds. Let's see how the second half unfolds this evening. Well, the key now is for Naperville North to keep possession when they have it. Don't let any counterattacks happen, and that's a good start to just send it back that way. But like you mentioned, the first minute yesterday was critical. Knocked by Sullivan out of bounds, and a throw in for Barrington here. Both teams were able to rally from behind. In the semifinals to get to this spot. Now 40 minutes away from a state championship. Howen hit a post in the first half. Charging forward, Carbonara down the left side. Here comes Peary heading into the corner with it. That ball's crossed in and scored. Well, there's Barrington. They didn't need a minute to get even tonight either. They did it yesterday in 35 seconds, and they get their goal today inside a minute. What a ball put in. You see their supporters, the students, the fans cheering on the sideline, and it's 1-1, or got right in the middle of the box that time. Uh, right in the middle of the box that time, Klaus Pollen making the run, Peary with the run on the left, just a great ball in, and Pallen able to get a flick on it, goal number 31 for Mr. Pallen. Pallen. Orr and Peary, those three combining to do all the magic. And now we've got a time match. One minute into the second half. It's what Barrington did yesterday. Maybe they like being down at halftime and seeing, hey, how quickly can we score to get this match even? Well, just like you said, said Nate, it's just like a switch. You come on at halftime and just say, okay, now I'm just going to turn it on and let's go. And now they have a chance again. They're attacking again. Carbonara with the throw in. It's a forward here. Peary to the edge of the box. Knocked away. These teams combined to score six goals in the second half in the semifinals. Now it is Naperville North charging through. Ty Conrad tried to go one on three. Didn't have any help and lost it. All the way back and they'll send it forward here. Cowan wins it again. Siemens. Coming out. Forward. Ball searching or get the touch. So does Cowan. Cleared out by Mitch Conrad to the sideline and out of bounds. Well, you talk about. Nash Perry also being a varsity track member on that run, man, he just got out of the gate. And uh, you know, that was one change that Scott Stive made at halftime is to send him forward more as opposed to being on defense. Ball out of bounds. Goal kick coming up. I tell you, speed is speed, you know, no matter what sport you're in. And uh, that was just a big play there for the Broncos to even this up. Ball sent towards midfield. Sullivan. Forward looking for Conrad. He's got Brom again with him, but couldn't get a touch. Carbonara. Hey. 
Sent all the way back. Gad boy. Walsh. Siemens. And now Guanaro. All the way back to Ruffalo. Put a little pressure on Ruffalo here, and he sends it forward. Powen came back to win it, now controls it. Moving forward. Or Powen trying to go through a double team. Carbonara wins it. Sends it all the way out wide right. Enrico Ruffalo hits the cross to the back post. Too strong and well out of bounds. All the way onto the track there. Good recovery also by the Huskies. Should get a good look at Welch. Good recovery by them on defense to get back to prevent any further and uh, you know, try and keep this at a 1-1 game as Barrington, like we mentioned, four goals in that second half of the semifinal. Bonaro knocked it back. Carbonaro lost it. Here's Sullivan with space. Tackled away. Bromigan briefly won it. Carbonara. Owen. Carbonara gets it to Guinaro. And a foul against Naperville North. Tell you what, number seven, Zach Carbonara seems fired up here in the second half. He's been running all over the midfield and getting the ball forward to Gio Guinaro. They've been doing a nice combination, a senior and a junior. Well, the, the the this is the time of the game where the seniors realize, hey, this is it, and Carbonara. Here's a shot from Carbonara, and a little adventurous, but Welch was there to make the save. Well, you see, you see the assertiveness from Carbonara as well, so, I mean, this is the time where they start to realize, hey, look, this is all on the line here, and we have to just give everything we have, especially for the seniors. It's your last last game in the for Barrington's case in a Bronco uniform. Same on the Huskies side. Powen. Running it down on the right side. A collision kept in bounds and cleared by Naperville North looking for Ty Conrad. Got a touch. Can't keep it on the sidelines. Guinero. Flag is up. We've got a player down all the way back to the left. Clock stopped at 34.02 and see who that is. Very slow getting up. Is that Klaus Powen? It is the goal score. 31 of them now on the season for the junior. Two yesterday. The goal today to tie it. He looked to be in some considerable some considerable pain as he was helped off the field there. Michael Blank will take his spot. We'll see how long. Powen is out. 34.02 on the clock as he leaves injured. Blank coming in has 10 goals. They'll play it all the way back for a throw in. As it was Naperville North who put the ball out of play so Powell could be attended to. And some good sportsmanship there as Barrington just immediately kicks it all the way out of bounds and they'll throw it into the goalie Welch who can launch it forward. So good sportsmanship there in the state championship game. See if that knock bothers Palin and see if they'll send Caleb Orr forward on a couple more of the runs. Here is Blake just checked in. Orr gets a touch. It falls to him and his shot's well off to the right and did not take a deflection for number 10. Caleb Orr, the senior who scored in the semi. Also had an assist in the semi. Eight of each of those on the year. That one was well right. Welch to midfield. Blank to Peary. Speedster down the sideline. Got a lot of pace with the ball. Gets it to the edge of the box. Sends it in. Headed down. Comes to Guanero. Guanero now into the corner. Crossing over completely and headed out of bounds. Let's see if Barrington tries a long throw in. That'll be a short variety. And they pull it back short. Walsh cleared away. And another throw in coming up. <laughs> 
Throwing on that far sideline. Ruffalo is going to let Peary take the throw in. Drops it off. Carbonara. It's right in the middle, calling for the ball. Can't get it to him yet. Still spinning backwards. And now they'll go down the sideline, headed. Here come the Broncos again into the box. Cleared out by Mitch Conrad. Carbonara. Chips it. Trying to get it to Ruffalo in the corner. Could not. Good defense that time by the Huskies. And they get it off the midfield. Second half. It's been all Barrington. Came out aggressive and stayed that way. All positive for Naperville North is it is still 1-1. So they've done a good job of settling down a little bit for the past eight minutes. But the Broncos have remained full throttle on the attack. Sideline. Whistle and a foul. <laughs> 11 seniors for this Barrington squad. So they're going to see that, you know, that sense of urgency trying to get a winner. Naperville North, of course, their seniors will be looking to do the same. Powell still getting some attention behind that Barrington bench on his leg. He left about four minutes ago now. Ball sent into the box towards the edge of the box. Headed back in by Broom again. Another flick. Goes to the corner. Ty Conrad will win a throw in. Now here comes Jack Barry. It's going to be short or long. <laughs> Jack's giving us that answer right on the screen. He'll come flying across the track here. His throw in in the middle of the box. Got the one goal lead in the first half. Throw in here. Looking for a header. Bounces all the way back. Shot from the 18. Goes to the side. And Conrad chasing it down. They were looking for a quick counter there through Blank. Now it is Guinero kicks it out wide right. And they cannot keep it in bounds on that sideline. Substitution in for the Huskies. Resendez checks back in. He had a goal in the super sectional win over Morton. The freshman got some quality minutes in the first half. They flick it on here looking for Conrad. Knocked away. Another throw in. And we'll have a stoppage here. Referee going over toward the Barrington bench. Yeah, he is gesturing wildly here, and he just gives a yellow card. On the coaching staff. That looked like head coach Scott Stibe getting that card, and they will let the fourth official know. And they'll radio it over and make an official announcement on who that card was on, but he went straight over to the head coach there showing the card. See Klaus Powell there, number nine, standing next to Coach Stive, and you can see he's now got that left leg heavily wrapped. Let's see if he's able to come back in and give it a go. Carbonara drops it off right side. Back up the sideline to Enrico. So they say to the bench. And it is the head coach Scott Stive with the yellow card. And a set piece coming up here for the Broncos. Not a corner kick, it was a foul right next to where it would be a corner kick inside a couple of yards. Enrico Ruffalo sends it in short, cleared out. Colin Iverson got a touch. And let's see if that's kept in bounds. It is not to throw in right in front of the Barrington bench. I was going to say just one less option for the Broncos in for, for Palin. And it looks like he's going to try and come in now. And you see the wrap, the wrap on the leg, so we'll see how that affects. And he missed six minutes, and you see that peeking out front of the shorts there on the left leg. 
throw in in his direction. Is headed out by Barrington. It'll be a Naperville North throw in. They have not had a chance on goal. Naperville North here in this second half of play. The whole half pretty much been played in their half of the field. Here's a whistle as the ball was out for a A foul called on that throw in. Ruffalo and Peary will put it in place. The Peary was, he sure is. Peary was very instrumental in the equalizer. Crossing it in to find Powell, he sends it in here. Looking for Powell, and that's headed out and over. Almost like a magnet, it always finds you. You just come in and, uh, you know, Palin, of course, with all the success he's had this year, you know, finding space in the six, just unable to direct it on frame. So Palin already, Farrington finding it important for him to get a touch early on to see how that leg's holding up. A little foul there is going to be against Siemens, who got to the back of Jack Berry. There is Klaus Palin, the goal scorer, equalizing in the first minute of this second half. It'll be key here for Naperville North to keep some sort of possession. They've been kind of volleying it back and forth with Barrington. The Broncos getting on the ball, so they're going to send this one. Looks like a long as well. Barry not able to win it. Sullivan tracks back to get possession. Down that left sideline. Still going. It's cross, intercepted. But then a miscommunication on who is going to clear it. Resendez comes in to win it. Still fighting in that corner. The freshman Resendez, and it's all the way out. Now they're finally able to clear it out of the box. And there is a collision. That was Sullivan and Powell going head to head. And the two stars we highlighted in the open. And Rick Gianni, the Main official walked over to make sure Powell was okay. He is, so he can stay in. Jogging away from that collision, it was out of bounds for a throw in. Naperville North. Playing it back. Sent in. Kleber, knocked out. So a throw in, that means Jack Berry will come running up to take this long throw. See Brom again and Sullivan. Brom again going toward the middle of the 18. Sullivan with his spot near the right edge of the six, now going toward the goal. Headed on, dropped down. I could not get to it. Now we've got a whistle. Flag up by the linesman. That was intended for Richmond again, and just could not get it to him. And it's going to be a foul against Naperville North here. I saw Sullivan going back. He was on the right edge of the sixth, and I saw him just running back when the throw came in. So they slid another player in Richmond over, and the ball actually flicked back to Sullivan. Just couldn't get it, and his foul was called on the play. Now they're going to stop the clock. Substitution in. Stop it right at the tick under 24. Now back in play. Sent in by Sullivan and kind of a wild kick there. This is going to go out for a goal kick. If you look at Alex Ruffalo. He's going to hand it off. And it'll be Nash Peary triggering. Playing that goal kick short this time. Powen, let it go. Nobody there. Carbonara can't settle. And then tugs the shirts of Bromigan. Giving another free kick here. I don't know if that was necessary from Carbonara. As the ball was well on its way to going to the other side of the field. Now a short kick. Sullivan puts it in play. 
Harvey sends it in. Dangerous ball is just wide off the header. And you mentioned that free kick was maybe not necessary. And then all of a sudden, the six foot four Colin Iverson is all alone in front of the goal and just missed, putting the Huskies back on top with this diving header attempt. There were two Huskies there. Also, Jack Berry was right behind Iverson as well. And so it was almost too, almost too good for the Huskies there, with two of them there to try and finish. Iverson just not able to direct it. Barry wins it. Huskies now getting a little bit better of the possession. Sullivan charging through. He'll let it go. Sullivan just wide to the left. Chris Sullivan looking for the go-ahead strike there. You see him put his hands to the turf, but uh, he had one thought in mind right there. You could tell from running from about 40 yards out, just streaking in. I'm like, I'm going to let this go at bottom left corner and just skirted wide. Goal kick. And a whistle and a foul against Naperville North as Orr went down trying to win that 50-50 ball. It's just those little Little things, just a, a, an unnecessary set piece here and there just seems to have gotten the, the Huskies going and they're realizing the energy now. They're realizing that they need a push here. Broncos. Send it forward into the box and all the way through. I like that delivery from the free kick. It was a nice line drive, not a lot of air underneath it. so. If someone was able to get there, it would have been more likely a Bronco. But Welch has himself a goal kick. Powen again behind the bench. He's trying to stretch out that left leg. When they stopped that clock right at the 24 minute mark, it was to take him off after he went down with the collision with Chris Sullivan. He's behind the bench right now trying to do everything he can to get that left leg loose so he can get back in to the state championship match. Right side. His teammates trying to push forward without him at the moment. Orr and Clark are on the right side. It's back over on the left now to Carbonara. He's had a very strong second half. Carbonara. Gets back inside. Knocked back towards Peary. Peary gets around a defender. Back into the corner. Carbonara keeps it in bounds. Along the end line, around a defender, sliding in. Back to the top of the box. Guanero battling. He keeps possession. To the corner flag. And knocked out. That's going to be a throw in for Naperville North. Very good work. It's 1-1 halfway through the second half on CSN Chicago. The IHSA is motivation. Effort. Innovation. Emotion. community. The future plays here. The Illinois High School Association. Welcome back to Hoffman Estates High School. 1-1 Naperville North and Barrington here in the second half of the Class 3A state championship match. Just before going to break there it was Chris Sullivan making the defensive play knocking it off a of Bronco and getting a North throw in. Nash Peary moving it back towards the middle of the field and sends it wide right towards the sideline back to the middle now. Chrome again got a good break on that ball and it's out of bounds off of Nash Peary substitution on that far side and they'll let the sub come in before they throw for Kleber and Bromigan's been running all over up front. He's going to leave. Ian Guppy who started for the Huskies is going to check back in here. Well, you said it Nate just the constant energy from Bromigan all night long. 
er evident early on in the first half and uh, now just over the past few minutes earning some chances for the Huskies to set something up. Headed right back out of bounds, Kleber. We'll get it back on this header. Now I'll try to send service, deflected. Back to him, Kleber gets another head. This one will oh, go out off of Naperville North and be a throw in for the Broncos. And they are going to try again to bring in their star striker, Klaus Powen. Returns to the game for the Broncos is number nine. So he Powen. left once, having that leg wrapped, and now back in a second time. And see if he's effective in the attack for the Broncos. And they make sure he doesn't touch it there. Conrad launching it towards the bleachers on that far side. Naperville North moving it forward. Peary, plenty of speed moving forward. Still going to the corner flag here. He sends it towards the end line, brings it back, still working. To the line, crosses it, and nobody there on the first effort, then cleared off the line on the second. Couple very good opportunities there for the Broncos. That one was cleared off the back line. Sent back in, and cleared out for a corner. That was a dangerous opportunity there as that was a very good service from the left in and actually did find a Bronco just unable to put that on frame but they're gonna, going to get a corner here as P Nash Peary going to retrieve the ball and going to go to the corner. Peary, ready to punch it in. They've got five in the box on this corner kick. Welch punches it. That'll bounce all the way through. And will be a throw in. Throw in coming in to the touchline and out of bounds. And Bromigan will come back in. Quick little breather, but I think. Jim Conrad knows he's the energy up front along with Sullivan to try and get possession and try and get a late opportunity here for the Huskies. Pass Richmond into the middle of the field. One there by the Broncos momentarily and now settled by Guppy. Barry losing it. Powell going the other way. Still Klaus Powell poked away. Tackle. That'll be a foul, and we're going to get the clock stopped at 15 13. And we're going to get discipline here as he goes to the pocket. Number 14. Kai Siemens getting the yellow card and going to the bench. Hard tackle on Sullivan. Sullivan looks all right. You can see, see him trying to walk it off. He's not going to let that stop him. Enrico Ruffalo subs in off the yellow card. You mentioned Sullivan start the game wasn't playing up front now. He's taking on that more of that role for the Huskies. Ball comes down on the header. Collision and a foul against the Broncos, Peary. I don't know, might have been a little bit of acting there by Ian Guppy. He went down hard and then popped straight up and went and sprinted to the edge of the box. Now it's given Sullivan an opportunity to work. Ethan Harvey always stands with him, but it's always Sullivan. See if he goes for a goal or if he goes for service. From about 30 yards out, service. Headed in! There! 2-1 lead for the Naperville North Huskies. Perfect service from Chris Sullivan. 
and that is slammed in by Jack Berry. He had the long throw in for goal number one. He was there for the header on goal number two. If you make a soccer instructional video, that's how you set it up. Chris Sullivan from the right side, an in swinger. My goodness, he absolutely put it on a tee, almost like a baseball tee for Barry to hit. Just Beast. perfect, perfect form all the way around. And Naperville North withstood the early charge from Barrington. Now has to withstand a late charge from them after going up 2-1. You can see Barry hold, 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 and then make the break at the perfect spot and head that one in. And it might be the play that wins the Huskies a state championship. 14 minutes and change left to defend their goal. Here comes Peary down the left sideline, looking to hit a cross right back in, and Welch comes out. And the whistle was blown anyway, because that ball was out before Peary could hit the cross. Well, Barring Barrington was immediately going back to the play where they got the goal to restart yeah. the second half with Peary down the left. Why not? Peary's been fantastic using his speed on that left side and Powen, Ruffalo and Clark and Orr all know how to fill the lanes as well. Here's Barry. Midfield. Poked away. Guanaro for Powen. Headed back. Ruffalo. Out to Orr. And Knocked away from him. To the sideline, here's a steal. Moving forward now are the Huskies. Crossing it in, Sullivan, Sullivan! Puts it in on goal and Ruffalo was there for it. Ruffalo had no chance on the free kick goal that put the Huskies away, but it, or, or put the Huskies on top. But he was there on that one. I was just saying Barrington was noticing on that stretch only had two players back. So now you're going to start to see everybody bringing everybody forward. Even this late on in the second half. Usually you see it with under 10 minutes. But now Barrington knows how important it is. Whistle. Foul against the Huskies. Going for that 50-50 ball. Let's stop and the clock stop here the as well. Clock here. See what the... Might be a card going to the Naperville North bench now. He went straight over towards their bench, did not give a card, gave a card to the Barrington bench earlier this half, to Scott Stive, the head coach. Now it's their turn, a little bit further out than where from the Husky score, but Peary will get this one inside the box, headed. And that'll go out for a goal kick. Good, de you know, say good delivery there. Perry hit that one well. He's had a very good night. The goal scorer, the Barry, is going to go out. Cesar Resendez is going to sub in. Just love this from Jim Conrad. Freshman playing in a state title game, 12 minutes left. Shows you the confidence that Conrad has in the rotation. A couple minutes to get a breather for Jack Berry to come back. Extra balls out on the field near midfield, and now it goes into the corner for Barrington again. Nice move in, sliding, tackle, and knocked away. And that'll roll to the corner, stays inbounds, and then cleared out. And that is a foul against Barrington in that corner, which will give a free kick here to the Huskies. Colin Iverson with the play there, sliding in, preventing that effort, getting the ball, and forcing the foul on the Broncos. Clear it all the way out near midfield. Got past Ruffalo. Drive it all the way down to the Huskies. Make the Broncos use as much clock as possible to bring it forward. We go under 11 minutes left in this one. Peary on the ball with speed. It's been one of their most successful plays all night. It's where they got the equalizer early in the first half. Now he moves back to the center with it still going. 
He gets around Ty Conrad. Pass deflected. Ready to launch it in. Guanaro didn't get a clean hit, and it's all the way out near midfield. <coughs> Gadboy. And they'll switch sides here. And then all the way through. Midfield, Conrad. Got a touch to Sullivan. Ships it out for Brom again. Didn't quite get there. Here come the Broncos again. Down into the corner. Ruffalo keeps it in. Now it rolls out. It'll be a Naperville North throw in. Now we're at the point of the game where any clearance is a good clearance for the Huskies, especially the further down you can get it. Jack Berry was not out long. The goal scorer is going to sub back in. Under 10 minutes to play here. He comes in for Kleber. And immediately going to come over and take that throw. Yeah, they see if they can get it out as far as they can out of this defensive third. Moving it forward. Here is Carbonara sending it into the box. Headed out. Right side, Clark. Knocked away from Michael Blink. Now he's got it again going forward. And again, cleared out. Cross midfield, nobody there. They'll reset the attack. Nope. Still battling Naperville North. Brom again. The header in the middle of the field. Powell for Ruffalo. Now to Peary. Peary trying to get it in the corner again. Peary pulls it back. On the edge of the 18, chips it in, headed out. Comes all the way down. Carbonara and Guinero. Guinero knocked out for a throw in. Huskies organization, these last eight minutes will be crucial and it's been Put to the test early on, a couple of shots deflected wide. There's still been a Husky player close in position. Going to be a sub as that ball was knocked out by the Broncos. It'll be a Husky throw in and a Husky substitution. They get it in and it goes right back out. Guppy subbed out. Down the sideline again. Under eight minutes to play in the state title game. Jim Conrad was last with Naperville North 2010 where they finished fourth in 3A. For looking for win number 223 here. Seven minutes, 30 seconds away. Broncos going to have something to say about it before then for sure. Throw in on the far sideline. Cleared out. Cross midfield. Gadboy knocks it down. Punches it back in. Looking for Powell. It'll roll all the way through to Welch. I see. Yeah, but see he's going to take his time with this, Nate. No rush. Until Powell or somebody comes running at him. No need to pick it up there. Now he does. He'll take a few seconds. Punt it back across midfield, flicked on by Richmond, and then Conrad all the way to Ruffalo. Cool to the opposite. He'll play it as quickly as he can and see if he can start the offense from the back. Headed. Conrad's the only one up to the freshman. Ty Conrad gets a touch. And that'll go out for a goal kick. Perfect job by Conrad with the position. Yeah, they're the just pressure. leaving him up top by himself. Go chase down everything he can. Make him work for it. Keep running. See if he can get some touches and run some clock. Back across midfield. Header, Bromigan. Sullivan launches it down. That one was bounce and roll for a throw in. Six minutes. Broncos get it as far as Richmond sends it forward. Ruffalo sideline, Peary. Nash Peary down the left sideline. 
Got a little bump, it went out, and he touched it last. Substitutions coming in. Peary went over to say something to the official that he didn't touch it last, and now he's gonna get talked to by Rich Giotti. Labor in and roaming it out for the Huskies here. Brumigan was the one that chased down Peary. And all that really does is waste about 20 seconds off the clock that the Broncos might need later. Conrad running for it, trying to get forward. Still has it into the box. Conrad tees it up on the other side of the box. Shot through. That's a goal. What a play. Ty Conrad's been running around on that far end. He keeps doing his work, and he sent that ball across perfectly. And the Huskies have a three to one lead. Ty Conrad, the freshman, has been working his tail off, and that time he set up Ian Guppy, and the junior blasts it home for his second of the year, and it's 3-1, and that might do it. Youth is served for the Huskies. We talked about it. Conrad was the only player up for the past three, four minutes, chasing after everything, getting some touches. Well, Nate, he found a touch, and right away, had he play, getting it to the other side where Ian Guppy was streaking in. Guppy had two seconds to settle and just buried it in the bottom right corner. Naperville North, five minutes away. Guppy gets the goal. Conrad deserves the credit. Coach's nephew, assist number five. And now a foul by Barrington. Well, Nate, we can say that Mr. Guppy might have landed the big fish. A card to Carbonara on the goal as well. So Carbonara got a yellow card and had to go to the bench. That's back-to-back -back yellow cards. Stevens had one. Carbonara had one. Now there was an elbow thrown here on the sideline. We're going to get the clock to stop again. 4.15 to play, and we're gonna get another yellow card. Let's see who this is on. He is walking all the way over, and that's a uh, second yellow on Kai Siebens, and he's off. Now, I understand the frustration at this point for the Broncos, but you know, again, if you're Naperville North, you just have to keep your cool. Don't try and get wrapped up in anything. And they're going to have a free kick here. The senior, Kai Siebens, getting his second yellow. The linesman had the flag up and called that, saying he either had a forearm or an elbow. So they'll play a man down. They're two goals down. When the clock stopped at 414, that's what they put the clock back to. So Siebens is done. Here it comes for the free kick just on the edge of the 18. Chris Sullivan stands over this one. He delivered an assist on goal number two and scored his 50th goal on a penalty kick yesterday to tie it. You know we'd love to get number 51 here on free kick to finish off this state championship. Yeah, we'll see what they're going to do is now there's huddling up, talking it over. Jack Barry lined up on the far side of the 18, the first one in front. Are we going to see a crossover? Ruffalo's got to be prepared for it if it's Barrington or Sullivan. Can there's see another can yellow start. card. Another yellow. The officials again having a conversation. And he walks straight over and gave a yellow card to Klaus Pallen. So the officials, the linesman again called over Rick Giotti, the middle referee, and he walked over to the wall and showed a yellow to Klaus Pallen. So that's back-to-back -back cards that have been triggered by the linesman calling over the middle referee, yeah, telling him what he saw away from the play. It just seems like, uh, you know, they're just losing a little bit of composure out there. And now you're going to have your leading goal scorer have to sit for a little bit until the next whistle. He's chatting right now with Peary and Ruffalo. 
They moved the clock back to 414 as they had it set and stopped with all of these. I think Alex Ruffalo wants one more in the wall. He was yelling over for a couple teammates, trying to set it up. Now Sullivan, he's not gonna take it. They play it off to him on the right. Sullivan will go to the corner and just run some clock here. And it'll be a throw in for Naperville North. That's exactly what the Huskies wanted. They just put it to the corner, run some clock. Very smart play. And we go under four minutes. They called a foul there in the corner, so the ball's on the ground for another free kick right by the corner. And again, I think they'll just touch it here and run clock. Now Sullivan crosses it all the way over. This one's gonna roll out for a throw in that belongs again to the Huskies. In the two-way title game, we had Chicago Latin win the first boys only state championship in any sport, joined a girls soccer and a bunch of scholastic bowl, which of course is co-ed. We get another whistle here and another clock stop with 3.15 to go. And we're gonna get a See if we're gonna get a card here with Ian Guppy, he's talking to, and we are. Another yellow. 3.15 to play. Naperville North's case, not the same situation where it's their first boys only. They've got them in cross country, football, golf, gymnastics, swimming, tennis. 20 of state championships, and of course, one in soccer, 1998 trophy. And it's Nate, three minutes and 15 seconds and away Nate, from having will, we, company. The Naperville North girls cross country team actually won the state title today as well. Yep. So now it could be a double championship day. Three minutes and 15 seconds away from it are the Huskies. They have four total in soccer. The other three on the girls side. 88, 12, 13. Sent forward. Headed into the box. Knocked down and Naperville North will clear it to the side. Busy day in IHSA. Football all over. For all eight classes, you mentioned cross country down in Peoria at Detweiler Park for all three classes and super sexuals and volleyball. Chicago Latin while their boys were here winning two way in state soccer, the girls were winning their super sectional to go down to Redbird Arena at Illinois State and advance to state. So a big day for the Latin School in Chicago as well. Getting a state championship in soccer and a super sectional title in volleyball. And now Naperville North looking for a double championship day. One in girls, one in boys. And they're 220 away from doing that. Making a couple substitutions. And these jokers over here. After went 1-1, pair of goals in the second half. Sullivan keyed the first to Jack Berry. Then the freshman Ty Conrad did the heavy lifting. And Ian Guppy slammed it home. With 5.04 to go. Since then, we've had a string of yellow carts. And an accumulation of yellows to get a red as well, which has Naperville North playing a man advantage right now. And there is the whistle and a foul. Forward, cleared, back to midfield. And got it on the right side. Back to midfield. Jack Bromigan, who had the goal to send Naperville North into this state championship match. Well, his sister won a state championship in Naperville North as well in soccer. Jack chasing it around here. He's number 11, right on that defense. Less than a minute away from matching his sister's accomplishment. Barrington out wide. Deflected and out of bounds. Uh -huh. 
Barrington on it again, trying for one last effort. 30 seconds down the pitch. Whistle, a foul. That's against Barrington. Less than 20 seconds to go. This one cleared forward with 10 seconds. Ruffalo out to grab it. Jim Conrad, the coach of the Naperville North Huskies, finished fourth as a player. He finished fourth a few years ago as a coach, and now he and the Huskies have a state championship. They're second in school history, matching one from 1998. They knocked off two Titans, one from Morton in the super sectional and an undefeated Bradley Bourbonnet Boilermaker team in the semifinal. And now they cap off a tremendous week with two goals in the second half and a 3-1 final score for a state championship. A big day in athletics for Naperville North. Two state titles in all sports. And now they've got a big week. The super sectional win, a semifinal win, both over unbeaten teams, and a state title. The Huskies of Naperville North, 3-1 winners to take the 3A state championship match. We'll be back with more from Hoffman Estates High School on Comcast Chicago. Country Financial wants to know, what do you look for in a financial services partner? Get to know us and get to know what we need and what we want to do. Treat me like they would treat their family. Help us decide what is a want and what is a need. I want something tailor-made for me. At Country Financial, our goal is to take the time to get to know you and then help you put together a customized package of insurance and financial solutions to help you own your future. When someone really listens and they're planning for us, I trust them. Visit ownyourfuture.com to find a local Country Financial representative today. Today's championship matchup is brought to you by Country Financial. At Country Financial, we understand that helping you means knowing you. Take charge of owning your future with Country Financial. Call your local rep at 1-866-COUNTRY or visit ownyourfuture.com. Welcome back to Hoffman Estates. Naperville North getting the 3-1 win over Barrington in the 3A state championship game. They're about to give away the trophies, the individual medals and the team trophies. Let's go over on PA to Hector Carabets. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to midfield for the presentation of the first and second place team and individual awards for the 2016 boys class 3A soccer state final. Presenting medallions and trophies are IHSA Board of Director, Mr. Dan Klatt, principal from Wakanda High School, with Steve Lackney, the Hoffman Estates High School Athletic Director and Tournament Manager, Chan Marshall, the Hoffman Estates High School Assistant Athletic Director, and Beth Souser, the IHSA Administrator responsible for boys and girls soccer. At this time, please meet the Broncos of Barrington High School, who finished the 2016 season in second place with a final rec record of 23 wins, four losses, and one tie. First, meet the principal of Barrington High School, Mr. Steve McWilliams. Assistant Athletic Director, Paul Pinau. The trainer, Aaron Arnuff. The trainer, Ross Schultz. Head coach, Scott Steib. Assistant coach, Caleb Copeland. Assistant coach, Joe Zimka. Assistant coach, Ryan Stengren. Assist assistant coach, Chris Ryerson. Assistant coach Roberto Avendeño. Manager Jack Davis. Number zero, Alex Ruf Ruffalo. Number one, Brett Sprangle. Number two, Justin Funk. Number three, Jordan Furman. Number four, John Gebboy. Number five, Charlie Frank. Number six, Hudson Walsh. 
Number seven, Zach Carbonera. Number eight, Kyle Owen. Number nine, Klaus Pellen. Number 10, Caleb Orr. Number 11, Gio Garinero. Number 12, Connor Delahunt. Number 13, Enrico Ruffalo. Number 14, Kai Stevens. Number 15, Josh Coulter. Number 16, Alex Ramirez. Number 17, Nash Peary. Number 18, Kel Oranek. Number 19, Michael Blank. And number 21, Nathan Patterson. At this time, please meet the Huskies of Naperville North High School, who finished the 2016 season in first place with a final record of 21 wins, two losses, and three ties. First, meet the Chief Operating Officer of Naperville High School, Mr. Bob Ross. The Principal, Stephanie Posey. Athletic Director, Bob Quinn. Trainer, Jason Marchowski. The head coach, Jim Conrad. Assistant coach, Steve Golitz. Assistant coach, Ryan Kuhn. Number zero, Tom Walsh. Number one, Jason Barba. Number two, Ellie Corfan. Number four, Michael Kornecki. Number three, Andrew Kelber. Number five, Chris Sullivan. Number six, Alex Wang. Number seven, James Zhang. Number eight, Ben Gorowski. Number nine, Jack Hill. Number 10, Ian Guppy. Number 11, Jack Bromangen. Number 12, Vincent Roberts. Number 13, Tim Corbett. Number 14, George Lettuce. Number 15, Quinn Bainziger. Number 16, Ty Conrad. Number 17, Cesar Resendez. Number 18, Ethan Harvey. Number 20, Mitch Conrad. Number 21, Will Ritzman. Number 22, Ryan Aronson, number 23, Jack Berry, number 24, Matt Bilarderlo, number 28, Jason Hip, number 29, Jacob Ridges, and number 30, Colin Iverson. Will Coach Stibe and captains from Barrington High School please step forward to receive the second place trophy. Will Coach Conrad and captains from Naperville North High School please step forward to receive the 2016 IHSA Boys 3A State First Place Trophy. It's Naperville North winning 3-1 to take the state championship over Barrington. Let's go down on the field where Matt has the 
currently winning head coach Jim Conrad in our country financial player of the game. That's number 23, Jack Berry. Matt. I'm with Naperville head coach, Naperville North head coach, Jim Conrad. Jim, congratulations. You are the boys 3A state soccer champions. Describe how it's feeling right now. Uh, if I try to put in words, I'll start to cry. So I'm going to I'm going to not do that. But it's it's unbelievable. I uh, I couldn't be proud of this group of boys. Um, I'm thrilled that we got to play a team like Barrington in the finals. Um, Coach Stab is someone I've respected a long time, um, and we respect their program. We feel like we're very similar. So it was a great game. And like I said at halftime, I knew we'd have to score more than the one to get the victory. And uh, we held on for dear life at times. They pressed us. They had a number of chances which we uh, found our way out of. And then. Uh, came up big down the stretch so I, I couldn't be happier and the play to put you guys ahead you know Chris Sullivan doing what he's been doing all year setting up Jack Berry there just describe how much of a career Chris Sullivan has had and uh, that connection there just was just was meant to be for you guys yeah absolutely restarts over half of our goals this year came off of restarts which is a huge number it's something we're, we've, we're very good at we're proud of and we work hard at um, so Chris throws a perfect ball and and Jack Barry deserves all the credit that's a big time finish right your state finals you're getting pressed it's 1-1 him to bury that in the back of the net um, Jack had a bad injury uh, two weeks ago in our sectional semifinal he battled through it uh, Jason McCrowski our trainer helped to get him ready and he fought and fought and fought and uh, obviously was there in the end to win it for us Coach Conrad, congratulations on being a state champion. Thank you very much. Jack Berry, our country financial player of the game today. Jack, just describe that go-ahead goal that you had, the nice setup from Chris Sullivan. Just describe what you were feeling out there at the time. Um, I just saw it go over Colin's head, and I just uh, just tried to get a piece on it, put it in. It really didn't strike me as uh, just didn't hit yet. And then when I just did, saw the fans, it really hit me that it was in. And, uh, just a great feeling. Can't put it into words. Talk about how you came together as a team for this run and uh, and what, what worked well for you and uh, what this means to you in the Naperville North community? Um, well, one of the things we really, thought we really did do well is restarts and scoring, so that's something that we've been able to push us through the playoffs, and just as Naperville North with the great coaches, they've really been wanting the state championship for a while, and we're just really happy that we could bring it to those, these coaches and to the Naperville North students. Jack, thank you. Congratulations. Back at off in the state's high school, Naperville North, the Huskies have their second boys soccer state championship in their school history. Two goals in the second half. One from Jack Berry came in on a free kick from Chris Sullivan, and then they put it away with 5.04 to go. Ty Conrad, the freshman, did the work to win the ball, sent it across, and Ian Guppy slams it home. A 3-1 win. Berry with the goal and an assist. And the Huskies are state champions of 3A. That ends our entire soccer season in IHSA. Normal U High winning in Class 1A. The Latin School out of Chicago winning in 2A. And Naperville North winning in 3A. All brand new champions here in 2016. That'll do it from Hoffman Estates. For my partner, Matt Meshack. For Kelly Eichhorst, our producer, and all of our crew at Play On Sports, I'm Nathan Bleva. We thank you for watching IHSA Soccer on Comcast Chicago.